I just want to be kind of like direct and tell you what all I've heard because like I'm really having trouble understanding like the things I've heard. Rachel, you set this for us. Hello fellow couch potatoes. Welcome to my channel. Let's get to today's video. Let's recap week 7's 10 biggest moments, storylines and takeaways. Starting with number 10. It's another matchup between Sarah and Mara. Returning from her one-on-one -on -one date, Sarah asked whoever planted the worries in Clayton's head to come forward. Eventually, Mara faces up, telling her fellow contestant that she simply wanted Clayton to be looking at the bigger picture at the end of his journey. In the world, a better place. The drama continued into the rose ceremony party while Clayton had lovely moments with Serene and Susie. Mara and Sarah geared up for round two. After pulling Sarah aside, Mara told her that her last ditch effort comment kind of rubbed me the wrong way, calling it insensitive and a little arrogant. And Rachel and the ladies listened in on the conversation. At the rose ceremony, Clayton didn't see it as quickly as Mara would have liked and opted to keep Sarah around and say goodbye to Mara and Elisa. This week, the group traveled to Vienna, Austria for their last international stop ahead of next week's hometowns. Susie's clock tower surprise worked as a charm as she earned the first one-on-one -on -one date of the week. Susie was whisked away on a shopping date with Clayton, Princess Diary Vibes. The bachelor patiently held Susie's clothes and watched as she modeled, and the kindness left Susie in tears with gratitude. We love a humble queen. We do, we do, we do. Baby girl, we all do. The magic continued into the evening portion of their date. Susie looks like she's straight out of a fairy tale in her romantic red bull gown, leaving all the other women jealous of her new wardrobe. Clayton's eyes light up as she steps out of the car and they head inside a beautiful palace for dinner. Susie expresses her appreciation for the day but also felt undeserving of it given her more humble background. What's wrong with me? Today was more than I could ask for, Clayton told Susie as he gave her a rose. Accepting yet another rose from the bachelor, the two end the magical day with a special performance from Chris DeBerg. Sweet. On the last group date, the woman, Genevieve, Sarah, Teddy, Rachel and Gabby were told that they'd each be having a couples therapy session with Clayton. During Gabby's session, she emotionally discussed her struggles with her mom and Teddy revealed her strong feelings for Clayton during hers. When it came to Genevieve's turn, the bartender struggled to open up about her feelings and told both Clayton and the therapist that she dislikes crying and getting emotional in front of people. Um, excuse me, this is her being vulnerable, is it not? I'm pretty but tough like a diamond or beef jerky in a ball gown. Feelings and I don't like being emotional in front of people, especially crying. So I try to... Um kind of put it off as much as I can. Well, guess not. It's very confusing. We mutually agree that their connection has come to an end as he couldn't justify meeting her family without truly understanding who she is. The poor girl has been through the ringer. But thankfully, she sees the experience as a stepping stone on her journey to personal growth. After revealing to the remaining woman that he'd sent Genevieve home, Rachel had her turn in therapy and admitted that she'd gone through a lot of insecurity in the house and feared losing Clayton. Society sucks. Then Sarah was up and much to the woman's dismay, she announced that she was weirdly excited about the session because she really loves therapy. You gotta love foreshadowing. You gotta love foreshadowing. You're not getting in, honey. Clayton thought it went well, but things soured when the therapist announced that one of the women had been performative during a session. 
The young lady seems like a perfectly nice person. She's getting her award. What's he doing? Why would he do that? He's a jackass. <laughs> He quickly discovered who that was on the group date as Rachel, Teddy and Gabby all individually recounted how they had considered leaving the show based on what Sarah said about her connection with Clayton. Sarah denies the allegations against her, continuing to blame her second one-on-one -on -one date. Like the second one-on-one -on -one that I have not said any of those things saying she feels as though she can't celebrate her happy moments when others can. Shockingly, Clayton doesn't believe her and makes the surprising decision to send her home. While she may have over-exaggerated her process with Clayton, her feelings seemed true, but ultimately being untruthful will get you nothing but a one-way ticket home. The only thing that needs patching? Is that theory? Clayton decides not to hand out the group dead rose as he wants to be certain that the women he selects for hometowns are there for the right reasons. Serene's second one-on-one -on -one date brings a nice change of pace following the dramatic group date. Serene quickly put Clayton at ease when she asked how he was doing. The two enjoyed a horse-drawn carriage walking around and dancing in the street. At the evening portion of their date, at the same palace as Susie's date, Serene tells Clayton she's falling in love with him. I, I am falling in love with you. After receiving the rose, Serene said in a confessional, I do think that he could be the one for me. During the rose ceremony, Clayton handed out the two remaining roses to Rachel and Gabby, thus sending Teddy home. Which means Rachel, Gabby, Susie and Serene are all heading to hometowns. Are you happy with this final four selection? Let me know in the comment section below.